Right, let's get to it. It's part three. I'm assuming people have watched parts one and two already. So we are doing the Z axis of the CNC rebuild right now. Two critical parts to that. Basically the two interface points. So we are creating a plate that will interface between the X axis carriage that we built in the last video and provide mount points for linear rails and the Z axis lead screw. And then the second interface point is between those uh, linear rails and the lead screw and what will actually mount the spindle. So as you can see, I've got this piece of plate steel. I've already squared it up. Uh, a lot of clamp manipulation and fiddling around to get that squared off nicely on the mill. I didn't film any of that. It's not super exciting. Um, but look, rest assured it is pretty much exactly on dimension. Uh, I'm measuring everything though off this top corner um, just so that all of my measurements are always from the same reference point because it doesn't really matter how square the plate is, it really just matters how all the holes relate to each other. And as you will see throughout this video, there's a lot of uh, tool changes, <laughs> a lot of holes, a lot of tool changes. Uh, you can see the, the plan on the left there. Um, this this piece has like, eight holes for the rails that are all drilled and tapped, and then another six holes for the lead screw mounts, also drilled and tapped, and then another ten holes for the uh, mount points onto the x-axis carriage. Um, those are all drill through. So, um, as I say, a lot of tool changes. Spot drill to uh, mark the point. Switch to regular drill to drill through. This is the tapping drill size for an M5. Chamfer hole. I like to chamfer before I thread. Um, this is my um, homemade tap follower, uh, which is very useful in this project. Um, yeah, and just run a run an M5 thread in and out. Uh, as I was going along here, I was uh, I was threading bolts into the holes. I went just to check that the thread was good, and also to try and avoid too much additional cruft getting down into the threads if I could avoid it. So yeah, we're going pretty quick now, uh, but spot, drill, chamfer, thread. Spot, drill, chamfer, thread. Lots and lots and lots. Now this is a completely manual mill, so uh, no, no automatic tool changes for me. I don't have any quick changes. So probably the vast majority of the work that went into these pieces was changing, <laughs> changing tool bits. Um, Obviously, I spent quite a bit of time on the plan itself. Uh, I had to tweak this. I did a bunch of prototypes for this, as I have with previous parts, to uh, laser cut plywood with this hole pattern to check because, as say, this this is a very critical interface point. Uh, I had made a couple of slight errors on the X axis carriage, which I needed to adjust for. Um, but that meant that when I had this plan, I was pretty pretty confident that it was going to line up although obviously you don't really know until you get to take it off and actually go and take it over there you go there's my template uh, that I'm just checking against um, yeah a little bit of cleanup required but that was a lot of time a lot of holes drilled um, a lot of taps I'd, I had worried a little bit about whether this plate steel was going to be thick enough whether I'd get enough threads in uh, to provide enough strength Having used it a bit, I'm I'm more confident that it is fine. I did take some precautions. I aligned the holes for the rails so that at least two of the holes I had clearance behind to put a, a nut on the back so I could have extra clamping. Um, but actually, I'm not sure that, that was required. And you can see me actually fitting it to the x-axis. So. Uh, I say I'm very happy to find that all of these holes did line up. Um, it doesn't take much inaccuracy for you to uh, suddenly not be able to get things in place. 
So I was very, very pleased to find that this did work. And I'm just putting some low profile nuts, um, sorry, bolts in the two edges there where they're going to be next to the rails so that there's clearance for the actual bearing blocks as they come up and down. Okay, so uh, you saw me attaching the um, the rails. I then off camera attached just the, the lead screw mount mechanism. I've actually quite happy I've been able to reuse the original Ox CNC um, Z-axis motor mount just with a little L bracket up the back here. That space is just perfectly off, off of this. And so now I just need to take this hunk of aluminium and go make the bracket that is going to fit there. So let's do that. Now the eagle eyed among you may have noticed I didn't actually carry that block of aluminium from the CNC. Uh, and this block is suspiciously slightly longer than that one because the magic of time travel. But you get the idea. Uh, I bought this huge hunk of uh, aluminium to Actually, initially, I thought I was just going to use it to make the brackets for the wax, that's what should be coming next. But I realized that the interface I wanted to create um, to hold the router mount would be much easier in a chunk of volume like this. So, a bit of surface uh, finish. Oh, gotta love those single point cutting tools for a beautiful, beautiful finish. It's a very satisfying process, just squaring this block up nicely on the machine uh, and trimming the ends to length. Now, I, I kind of faffed around with this end because I didn't really have quite enough clearance to cut and trim all the way down. Uh, and then I realized I didn't really need all of that thickness. <laughs> so off camera, I uh, used the bandsaw again just to, to hack myself down to the thickness I wanted, or at least close to it, and then did another pass with the what's the single point cutting tool fly cutter <laughs> that's the word um, and here we are obviously using the edge finder just to get myself centered and uh, off the back now uh, what I want to do here is cut a recess uh, in the back of this block because the lead screw mount is higher than the rails mount so I need something to compensate for those differences to clamp together and I didn't want the internal corners of that pocket to be sharp corners um, I wanted them to be radius but I don't have a bull nose end bill so I decided what I would do first is go in kind of vertically and drill holes with a drill bit of the right radius that would become the corners, like the bottom corners of that pocket, which will make sense in a bit now. So just making sure everything is nice and clean and clear of chips before I mount this in, because we're now starting into needing to create precision depth cuts. Just tappy tap tap to get everything nicely in place. More manual tool changes, uh, a lot of flipping between uh, end mill collets and the, the drill chuck in this project. Now this is a trick I've seen done where you bring the end mill down onto a piece of, again, essentially scrap metal or whatever you like, but then measure that metal to figure out the offset so that you get a nice perfect on the surface without having touched off the real part. Now, all of that effort is somewhat ironic considering what is about to go wrong in this project. <laughs> but, um, here you see me being very aggressive with this aluminium cutting end mill. Um, really, really grinding it. And that's what happened. Um, I really pushed it too far and I snapped it. And it is around about now that I also realized that as part of it failing, it actually pulled the end mill out a little bit. And so I pocketed too deep in a chunk of this. Um, which was not ideal. So off camera I fixed that. This milk looking substance is a two part plastic epoxy which I poured into the excessive pocket part 
and then just build flat. Now, I'm getting away with this because uh, this is actually kind of clear, almost completely clear of the holes that I actually need to drill through. So I could or should have milled a, you know, a, a replacement piece of aluminium or something else, but ultimately that is not a, a load-bearing surface in this part. Um, so I just neatened it up. Uh, I, I'm, I almost didn't bother doing anything, but for the sake of looks, <laughs> I did at least clean it into a, a flat surface. Uh, and now we're once again edge finding uh, to set about doing the holes here. So this will be holes, clearance holes to drill, uh, uh, to connect to the linear rail bearing blocks and to the lead screw block. And here we go again. Drill, spot drill, drill, chamfer. Uh, actually, no, this one isn't a chamfer. This one is a um, counterbore because all of these bolt heads need to be below the surface uh, because the top of this surface will mount the router spindle. So here's my counterbore. Uh, it helps if you time your chuck, uh, but when you're changing tools a million times, sometimes you lose track of, did I tighten that? Uh, so this is actually an operation which was reasonably, not exactly critical, but I, I needed to make sure I had enough depth so that the length of bolts that I have would seat properly. Like I, didn't, I don't want them to bottom out on the threaded hole that they're threading into. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, there's, there's a little bit of sensitivity there to making sure your depth is correct in line with the length of the bolts you have. Uh, so rinse, repeat that a bunch of times uh, to another pattern, and then here we go again, milling out some channels. So the, the spindle mount has these little, uh, not exactly V grooves, but um, uh, lines on the back of it for vertical alignment, which I needed to match. So just pocket those three mil depth trenches and then come in with the uh, 45 degree router bit to bevel the edges of those trenches uh, to match the alignment. You can see the mount in the background there. Um, so a lot of a lot of careful fiddling around to, to perfectly match this up. Um, I may need to make some adjustments later if, I, if tramming reveals a problem, but I'm for the moment going straight for, can I just make this neatly aligned? Just using the 45 degree bit here to line up the holes. Now, what I noticed on this uh, Chinese bought spindle mount is that the holes, the pattern do, did look like the hole spacing relative to each other, again, was right but there was no good reference point off the edge of the casting for which there was a consistent measurement. So I just uh, eyeballed it in with uh, this bit and checked that I, would, you know, that spacing was correct. And then I could go in and uh, drill and tap, etc. The, uh, the mount points for those. Uh, now, I probably could have gotten away with doing just blind holes for this, just because it doesn't need to thread that deep. But uh, it just seemed easier, since it's not critical, to just do drill all the way through and thread down as far as possible. Yet more drilling and tapping. I should keep track of how many holes I've had to do this to in this whole CNC build. At this point I had <coughs> at this point I had realized to use a large spot drill so that I was essentially getting the spotting and the chamfering in one operation, which uh, I probably should have realized for earlier operations, but you know, you live and learn. Um, and there you go. This was probably the most complicated bit so far compared to the other plates and such that I've, I've done. This needed, you know, operations on basically all sides. Um, and uh, yeah, that sort of, that step between the middle pocket there is, is a critical dimension. 
because it has to match exactly the offset between the the bearing blocks and the lead screw mount. Looks very shiny and beautiful. There's a lot of. I should. I really need to rig up my compressor to, so that I can have a an air hose over here so that I can just blow parts out a bit better. Well, there you go. Nice, shiny. I'm somewhat procrastinating going and actually checking it, but it's time for actually putting it against the machine and seeing whether all of that fits. How did he get there so fast? It's magic. Okay. okay, so here is that complicated bracket piece. Um, it was a, a little bit of a faff to do, but um, pretty happy with how it's come out compared to the original plan. Um, now to check that I did in fact get all the spacing right. <laughs> Although I could do with <laughs> just blowing out the last of the <laughs> debris from this. <laughs> right. Uh, so what I need, I think, in these guys. Okay, that's that mounted. Uh, now just to set this guy in place. That has mated beautifully. It's obviously rock solid. Very difficult to move. In fact, basically, unless I bolted the CNC machine down, like the. <laughs> I just shift the machine, the whole machine around if I really drag it. That is very pleasing. I wasn't going to wire up the motors or anything until I'm finished, finished. But now I'm almost tempted to rig something just to try and um, just to try and drive it a little bit, just to see how it goes. But that that is a completed Z-axis Z-axis mount, and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how solid this all seems. That is it for this episode. Next time I will be making the y-axis mounts for the for the dual lead screws down each side, cleaning up a lot of this stuff. We'll be nearly there. So thank you for watching. See you next time.